YouTube, it's Daniel the Rocket Noob, and we are back building the Quest Superbird model rocket. And we're going to take a little bit of a detour because I'm going to make some custom parts. You remember from the last video, I cut my own paper coupler from a BT55 tube so that I would be able to avoid using the, the plastic coupler that came with the kit. Um, and I'm going to have to make a bulkhead. The coupler will slide into the payload tube about halfway and get glued in there. Uh, the payload will actually go in through the top. And uh, so we need something to attach the shock cord to and also protect the uh, payload from the ejection charge. And that little thing that's going to hold everything in is called a bulkhead. It's a solid piece. You can buy a solid piece made out of balsa, um, called a, uh, usually called a nose block, and it's basically like a long plug and use that uh, as a sort of uh, shoulder. Uh, or you can make a bulkhead, which is what we're going to do today. And we're just going to use um, uh, a little bit of scrap balsa. We're going to cut out two pieces and uh, I'm going to use some scraps from previous kits. It's always a good good idea to keep the, um, the sort of the fin templates that are left over from your kits for a couple reasons. One, you know, sometimes you get some really nice uh, scrap bits of balsa. This is a nice, pretty, pretty hard piece of um, balsa from an Estes reflector kit. And there's all this extra stuff that's not going to get used uh, unless I have a use for it. Uh, another thing, uh, it's just a little tip, uh, sometimes uh, you might break a fin and it might be so damaged that you need to replace it. Well, if you have the uh, fin templates, you at least can trace uh, the outline onto a piece of balsa wood and make yourself a new fin. It might come up every now and then. Uh, I've got this 3 seconds inch piece of uh, balsa. I've also got this eighth inch piece, which is from, I don't remember what kit this is from. It might be the uh, Estes Monarch. It might be something else. I'm going to start with the bottom plate. What we're going to have is we're going to have two plates. Uh, one is going to be slightly larger than the other. So the the outside plate or the bottom plate, we're, we're going to end up with a, a disc that is the same outside diameter as the coupler that we're using. And then the inner plate is going to have the same as the inside diameter of the coupler. Uh, so you don't have to cut this perfectly. As a matter of fact, you probably won't be able to if you're doing it freehand. But I'm just going to show you how I'm going to start. So we're going to do the bottom plate. And I'm going to use an eighth inch piece of pretty tough balsa wood. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace around the outside of the coupler. I'm also going to trace around the inside of the coupler. With a nice sharp pencil. Now I'm going to remove it and I have moved my hand. So I'm going to flip it over and try again. All right, so I'm tracing around the outside of the coupler. Tracer on the inside of the coupler. Now, I have two circles. They're concentric. One is about the size of the outside diameter, and one is about the size of the inside diameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the circle. We're going to cut out the larger circle. You want to cut... Uh, you don't want to try and get it perfectly on the edge. You want the circle to be... You want the disc to be a little larger than the diameter of the tube because you're probably not going to cut it perfectly straight. Uh, so you're going to have to sand it down. This is going to take a little bit of time um, and don't feel like you need to cut all the way through the first pass. So I'm going to just make this piece of balsa a little bit smaller so it's easier to work with. Right. So <clears throat> I'm going to try and cut around the outside of this larger circle. And I'm going to try to just move the balsa and try not to move the hobby knife that much. All right. It's very tempting to press really hard to try and not take too long, but resist that urge. Just allow the hobby knife to do the work. Now, I think I'm just almost starting to get through right about there. Ah, almost there. Right. And we got it. Okay. So that disc 
is larger than the outside diameter of the coupler, and that's good. That's what we want. All right. Now I'm going to use a thinner piece, which should take a little less time, and I'm just going to trace the inside diameter of the coupler on that. Put it on a corner, maybe. Don't use all of it. All right. So I got a few stray lines, but I think this is doable. All right. So once again, we're cutting outside that circle. We want it to be slightly too large and we'll sand it down to size. For a lot of uh, si different sizes of model rocket kits, you can buy bulkhead kits if you want to make a payload section in a rocket that doesn't have one built into the design. You just need to if you're building a rocket that has two separate tubes that uh, get coupled together, <clears throat> well that's pretty easy to make the upper tube into a payload section. And if it's a rocket that has a single body tube, you can cut the body tube in two. Come on. So close. And we got it. Boom. That's done. Now this is going to go inside the coupler. Uh, we're going to sand it to the right size, and of course it's going to be a little narrow in spots, but that's okay. So let me grab a sanding block. So now we have our two discs. One is ever so slightly larger than the other, and that's great. And the inner one we're going to sand first. We want it to get where it just fits. And it looks like I've got a couple of spots it almost does just fit, but you have to distort the tube just a little bit. So I want to make sure to sand it so it's a little closer to round. Just keep checking. It should go in without distorting anything. Should have to push it on, but not to not using too much force because we want to make sure that we don't distort the shape of the body tube. All right, so that looks like it just about fits without too much trouble. Push it on there. And maybe a little bit more right here. Yep, yeah. all right, so it's not a perfect fit. I should have cut this a little bit bigger so that I wouldn't have a gap here and then sand, sand the whole thing round, as round as I can. But it's going to be okay because what we're going to do is we're going to glue these two plates together. All right. Perfect. I'm trying to get this centered as well as I can because essentially you're going to have a plate that is two parts. The part that goes on the outside is going to butt up against the coupler and the part on the inside is uh, going to fit inside the coupler. It's not my best work, but it will do. So we're going to grab a piece of wax paper. We're going to grab our wood glue or white glue. <coughs> a little bit of paper towel. We're going to spread a very thin layer of glue over the smaller plate. And then we're going to try and center the smaller disc onto the larger disc. And because it's not perfectly round, it's really not, not going to matter that much. As long as we have a bit of edge all the way around. So once that is where you want it, you're going to put a book on top of it. The best idea is to cover it with wax paper so you don't glue the bulkhead to your book. Find yourself a book. I'm going to use the uh, Compact Photo Lab Index, which is uh, still a very useful book, even with the advent of digital photography. It's still good for rocket building. All right, we're going to let that dry for several hours overnight, and then we will finish the bulkhead. Mm -hmm.